Ladies and gentlemen, it is the off season now, and I wanted to go over some little history when it comes to college football, the whole blue blood debate, the AP poll, and stuff like that. So we're actually going to be taking a look at several different AP poll rankings, and this is really like the total history of college football. Where does each team rank? Who really is the best overall team in college football. I'm going to talk about that. But this is just the overall amount of appearances inside the AP poll. This is not perfect, you know, scientific data because some teams started at different points and things like that. But you can see Ohio State leads with almost a thousand overall appearances and the percentage, almost 80% of AP, AP polls the Buckeyes have appeared in. Michigan at number two, Oklahoma three, Bad tied with Notre Dame at four. Of course, it's interesting. You take a look at that average ranking. Alabama is number one, and that's mainly, you know, the crazy, crazy success they've had with Nick Saban, with Bear Bryant being the number one team in the nation or a top three team. They're going to have a hot, higher overall average ranking because they've been ranked first so many times. USC, Texas, and Nebraska. So I do believe those are normally the eight teams that are considered blue bloods. And, you know, this is a pretty you know, impressive thing by the AP to have them all inside their top eight because it is a full historical ranking. And then Penn State right on the doorstep of those top eight teams. Or actually, you know what, pretty far off in terms of appearances, they're about... I would say 57 appearances behind Nebraska and then LSU coming in at number 10 there. Uh, just moving down to 11, you've got Florida tied with Georgia. Of course, Georgia going on a crazy run recently with the amount of talent in their state with Kirby Smart really seeming like he's going to be committed to that program for the next decade plus. Kirby seems more like a Dabo Sweeney type coach in the sense where he's really not going to look for NFL jobs and be all that intrigued like maybe Ryan Day would be if he won a national championship. Jim Harbaugh, Lincoln Riley if he wins a national title. He seems more like a college coach. You've got Tennessee at number 13. They've been down recently. Auburn tied with them at 602. Florida State, you can see Florida State's average ranking at 8.7. So that is, you know, inside the top 10. That's one of the more impressive ones. UCLA, Miami also's average ranking inside the top 10. We remember their crazy good teams that they had. Clemson coming on recently. They come in at 18 here. A&M at 19, and then Washington as the number 20 team in terms of overall appearances. This is appearances inside the top 10, 1936, which I believe was the first year of the AP poll, to 2022, Ohio State once again in first, with Oklahoma this time in second, Bama in third, and again, Bama's average ranking is the best out of everyone here. And I believe you have Oklahoma at second best and Florida State at third best. But the top 10, Notre Dame at number four, Michigan at five, Nebraska at six. You know, it, what Nebraska did in the 90s, it's really helped them considering how down they've been. If Nebraska was just a consistent 10-win team, you know, in the 2000s, they would probably be in the top five of all of these, but they just haven't been. USC at number seven, Texas at number eight, and once again, it's that cutoff of blue bloods. You've got Penn State knocking on the door, but they are pretty far away from Texas, over 50 appearances behind and then Florida State, who is a newer team in terms of this data, because this started in 1936. They come in at number 10, but they do have the average ranking of a 4.5. This is appearances inside of the top five. So Bama coming in at number one. Again, they've had just crazy success where most years with Nick Saban, they're at least ranked number one, I would say a minimum of five or six weeks a year. So that's really going to help them. Oklahoma at number two, Ohio State gets bumped down to three, so Ohio State's been consistently really good, but 
you know, there is that kind of issue with Ohio State having just two national titles in, I believe, the past 50 years. Notre Dame at number four. You've got Michigan at five, Nebraska, USC, Texas, and then Florida State at number nine with an impressive average ranking. You can see the percentage over there, Bama with 37%. Oklahoma and Ohio State basically tied, and then there is a crazy drop-off. So in terms of the top five, it's really been three teams that consistently have been inside the top five of the AP poll at least a third of the time or more, Bama, Oklahoma, and Ohio State with Alabama leading the charge there. This was just something funny. that <laughs> Some of these teams inside the top five, North Carolina pre-flight, I'm guessing that was during the Wright Brothers or something. I don't even know what that is, but there's just some funny teams towards the bottom, probably, you know, in 1940 or whatever. How about South Florida making an appearance? Air Force as well, Marquette. Uh, and then you can see this is the appearance appearances at the number two overall position. So how many times have you been ranked second overall? You can see all these teams have been ranked first, but... Alabama, by far, 128 appearances, the only team on this list to have double-digit percent at 10.5%. Oklahoma and Ohio State neck and neck with, once again, Oklahoma edging out Ohio State, and then there's a major drop-off. So just from these type of graphics, it's telling me that in terms of consistency being at the top, it's Alabama and then it's Oklahoma and Ohio State neck and neck in terms of college football history. And then you've got Texas at number four, along with Nebraska, Notre Dame, those teams. Miami comes in at number seven due to their crazy success in the 90s. Penn State at number eight. Michigan down at number nine. Again, this is just the number two overall spot. So it's, it's not number one, it's not three, it's two. And then USC at 10 there. This is appearances at the number one overall spot. And this is remarkable. I remember when I was younger, Ohio State was number one at a point. I believe the Buckeyes have not been number one in the AP poll since 2015. I know they were number one with the Justin Fields team, according to the college football, football playoff a few weeks in 2019, but they were not number one in terms of AP. So Alabama has a ridiculous advantage in terms of being number one in the AP poll all time, 140 to 105 Oklahoma down at number three. Again, it's those top three with Alabama separating above Ohio State and Oklahoma. And then you have your Notre Dames, your USC's, Florida State, Nebraska, Miami, Texas, and then Florida. They've been ranked first. Some of those Urban Meyer teams helping this out 41 times there. Total appearances inside the AP poll. This is just, I would say this is modern history. So what we consider, you know, HD television, color television, more modern times with more modern recruiting, just appearances. You could be ranked number one. You could be ranked number 25, but it is important to look at the average ranking as well. So Ohio State and Oklahoma at the top, both of those teams really didn't experience much of a downturn Ever, you can see the percent Ohio State 92% of overall AP polls from 2000 to 2022. They have been uh, ranked at some point somewhere. Oklahoma's at 90.7. Those are the only two schools above 90%. Georgia actually at number three. And then you've got LSU, Florida, Bama all the way down at six because of those early 2000 teams, but their average ranking is just ridiculous. 4.3, the next closest is Ohio State at seven. You know, that's where you're ranked in terms of the AP poll. It's, it's, a, it's a lot different. Like, take a look at Michigan. They're at 12.1. It's a big difference to be ranked first versus 25th, and that's where that average rank comes into play. Oregon at number seven. So in the modern age, you've got Oregon. They're definitely investing a lot into their program. They had those Chip Kelly teams. Even after Chip Kelly left for a few years with Mariota, they made the playoff and they were consistently ranked. And now, again, with Bo Nix, they're showing more consistency. USC, that, that's really the early 2000s. Texas, that's really the early 2000s. And Clemson, the reason for that is the Dabo Sweeney run that they've been on recently. This is since the college football playoff. Amount of appearances inside the AP poll. Alabama 
Ohio State, it should be 100%. Ohio State got screwed by the Big Ten commissioner when they canceled the season, and then they said you cannot rank Big Ten teams. That's why Ohio State doesn't have 100%. Otherwise, they would have 100%. But I mean, Alabama, an average ranking of 26 It's ridiculous, but it's very clear. Alabama, Ohio State, Clemson at number three. So Clemson, I believe in 2014, which was the first year of the college football playoff, struggled a little bit. They really didn't start their run until 2015, which is hurting their numbers. Otherwise, they would be probably at around 97% ranked. Oklahoma at number four. Those are like the top four teams in terms of appearances. Georgia at number five, and they're rising. Notre Dame at six. Of course, they've had issues winning in the playoffs and winning New Year's six games. Michigan recently, they've been really good at being ranked inside the top 10. LSU at number eight, they've been kind of hit or miss. Wisconsin has been a very consistent team, but their average ranking is just 13, and their highest rank ever in this time period, according to the AP poll, is number three. And then Oregon at number 10, they were ranked number two with that Mariota team, I believe, back in 2014. And then this is just the overall total points. This is the full history, 1936 to 2022. You know, they have the whole point system, and Ohio State is in first with, you know, almost nearing a million points. They're in first by about 17K ahead of Oklahoma. But, you know, normally with these trends, what we see is... It's in some order, Alabama, Ohio State, and Oklahoma. Normally, Alabama has the more impressive overall ranking, meaning they're consistently ranked higher than both Ohio State and Oklahoma, but Ohio State and Oklahoma have been a little bit more consistent than Alabama in terms of not having very many down years. But those are the top three teams in terms of basically all of the historical data we're looking at. And then you have Michigan at number four, Notre Dame at five, Nebraska at six, Florida State at number seven. Actually, I'm not sure when they started doing points because I'm if Florida State is at number seven, then I don't know when they started doing points. They probably started doing points in the 70s if Florida State's at seven, USC at eight, Florida at nine, and then Texas at number 10. So this just goes to show the whole uh, pandemic thing and, and the issue with it. So... This is a team going from unranked to shooting up as high, you know, like what's the record? A team going from unranked to what? Missouri in 1975 and after week one, I'm guessing they won, you know, a blowout against a really good team. They went from unranked to number five. Ohio State in 2020, you know, went to number, went from unranked to number six, you know, and the same thing with Penn State going from unranked to number 10. All of the other ones happening. Oh, I guess Arizona went from unranked to number 14 in the nation. Wisconsin in 2016 went from unranked to number 10. Texas also in 2016 went from unranked to number 11. Most of these happening early in the season. And then these are just the cha- the national champions in terms of their history. Where have their rankings been? What is their lowest ranking? You can see if you want to win the national championship, at least recently, you've got to be inside of the top 10 minimum outside of Florida State. The AP preseason poll had them at number 11, but Ohio State, you know, even with, you know, how about Ohio State being ranked 23rd after they lost to Virginia Tech, but even them in the preseason, they were 5th, 3rd, I mean, look, Bama was 3rd, Clemson was 2nd, Bama was 1st, Clemson was 2nd, LSU was 6th with Joe Burrow, Bama was 3rd, Georgia was 5th, and then this past year, Georgia was third, I believe, behind Ohio State and Alabama. So if you want to win the national title, recent history says you got to be in the top six, top five since 2014. And then the biggest extreme, I mean, Auburn back, you know, in 2010 was ranked 22nd. Ohio State, the lowest overall ranking in August and September at 23rd. That was the combination of the Braxton Miller injury in the preseason along with Ohio State losing to Virginia Tech in week two. And then this is the preseason AP poll. You know, there's only been one unanimous team, and that is that Ohio State team that returned basically everyone after beating Oregon. They got 
the they're the only unanimous. It's like Steph Curry being the only unanimous MVP. It really doesn't mean anything, but it's still cool. Let's be honest, it is. And yeah, Ohio State completely choked that season. They tried to rotate quarterbacks with Barrett and Cardale, and it didn't work out. But you can see the overall teams there. Really no recent teams. You know, 2015, 2013, 09, 07, 14, 05. No teams in, you know, from like 2018, 2017, 2019, 2020. So that is interesting. Most years between appearances in the top 10. Minnesota, 56 years. If I remember correctly, they ended up getting ranked after beating Penn State inside the top 10. I think that's when they got there. How about in? Indiana, the pandemic saves Indiana football. I guess for a year it did, but now Indiana sucks again. <laughs> Tulane, so I'm guessing that's that needs to be updated. Two, well, actually, I, I guess it doesn't need to be updated, but it is funny because Tulane finished their final ranking inside of the top 10 at number 9 after beating USC. And then most games coached as the AP number 1. Pretty remarkable. Nick Saban, 98 games, the next closest 45 games. Just a ridiculous, ridi I mean, that's just, if you want a graph that says Nick Saban is the GOAT, I mean, how do you, how do you deny it, man, after looking at this? 98 to 45, it's not even close. Split national championships, the last split national title came in 2003, split national championships are the stupidest thing ever, I'm sure we all agree on that. But 2003, 97, 91, 90, I mean, they happened a lot. Uh, and then this is weekly appearance, AP appearances, active streaks only. I have to mention, once again, Ohio State getting screwed by the Big Ten for canceling the season in 2020 and then putting it back on, and that ruined their streak. I believe Ohio State would be number one on this list if not for the cancellation, but Bama... The last time they were outside of the top 25, it's saying was 2008. Actually, you know what? Ohio State was outside of the top 25 in, in 2011. So it would be 2012 to 2022. Georgia, they've got a nice streak going, and we certainly wouldn't expect that to end. I mean, Georgia might lose a game, but they're not falling outside of the top 25. Ohio State, Michigan on a nice streak. Utah having a nice little multi-year streak. Clemson, when were they outside of it? Oh, they must have been outside of it early last year, I guess. USC, Tennessee, Oregon, and Penn State are all new in terms of that. Weekly appearances inside of the top 10. So it's saying Alabama has been inside of the top 10 every week since 2015. Ohio State and Michigan are both tied. Georgia at 32. That is crazy. And then weekly appearances inside of the top five, active only. How about Georgia at 31? Ohio State and Michigan almost tied. And then T TCU at five. Uh, but just some fun little things to look at in terms of the history. Fun little off-season video. But guys, that's going to do it for this one. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description.